joining us from New York. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, Ann Coulter. Um, Hello, great to talk to you, Barry. Listen, I got to tell you, as we start off here, uh, our own Michelle Larson, who's co-hosting the show, uh, have, gave me a note a few moments ago. She said that her favorite book title from you is How to Talk to a Liberal If You Must. Oh, so, that's a good one. <laughs> a good one, too. Let me, let me ask you, the president came out today. There he was in the Rose Garden, deja vu all over again, and he's he's he's... He believes. I think it's. I think it's kind of a, a godlike thing. He thinks he has because yeah. you know the first words. The first words in in the Bible. And God said, you know. Let the, right. So he believes he can speak. Uh, what is it? One and a half uh, uh, trillion dollars in new taxes into existence. Yes, and what I keep trying to get Republicans to say robotically, automatically, whenever the Democrats, well, Obama in particular, a lot of Democrats aren't wild out, brings up this jobs program is, what happened to the last trillion dollars we gave you? Because that's really, I mean, that, that, that was what the last trillion was for. Remember all the shovel-ready jobs? Yes. And we have to have this to get the economy pumping. And what did they do? They spent it on public sector union pensions right. and allowing governments to keep an ever-growing government workforce. We gave them a trillion dollars for that. Well, we didn't give them. It was a Democrat House, Democrat Senate, Democrat in the White House. They took a trillion dollars on that, and they blew it. And at this point, it's, it's like you're... Your screw-off brother-in-law coming to you after he asks you for $500 for the rent has to have it. It's an emergency. I've got to have it. I've got to have it. You give it to him. He spends it on drugs, then comes back to you a week later and says, I need $500 to pay the rent. Right. Well, what happened to the last trillion dollars? What do you, let me ask you this. What do you think? Of this? I get a big kick out of this. They're not using the word stimulus anymore. T- stimulus is poison now. <laughs> It's like this with all liberal words. You know how they keep changing the word for abortion? And the way they keep changing the word for themselves. You know, 50 years ago, they were progressives. Everyone realized that meant communists, so they became liberals. And then everyone realized that meant communists. Now they're progressives again. They just keep changing the word, hoping people won't know what the substance of the thing is they're talking about. See, I, look, i, I got to tell you, the thing that amazes me is the media, uh, they, they, they don't really realize what they're reporting. You know, in the latest package, we've got to... We got to extend uh, unemployment benefits again, right. and, and we got to add more weeks to that. I mean, isn't that like admitting that the last stimulus program was? I mean, if if, we, <laughs> if it worked, why are we having to add more employment benefits? Yes, yes, yes. And plus, which I don't believe them that they're not going to go out and spend it on wine, women, and song again. I.e more government workers and making sure that government workers don't even have to pay 2% toward their own pensions or have their their cost of their glamorous health care insurance paid for by the taxpayer. They don't have to contribute another 1%. That's what it went to last time, to save government workers' jobs, because government workers in this parasitic relationship vote for the Democrats. The Democrats increase government workers' salary, benefits, vacation time, work conditions, and so on and so forth. And then the government unions make sure the Democrats keep getting reelected. That's what the trillion dollars went for last time. And you know that's what it's going to go for again. All right, let me, now let me ask you this. Do you think finally, after all this time, that the dew is sort of coming off the rose here? I mean, is uh, the ABC, for example, and the Washington Post were sort of forced by the bloggers and talk radio to come out and start reporting about uh, Solyndra. And yeah, yeah. They, then they made it their story. They said, oh, we've uncovered this, and we got an exclusive. Fox even was interviewing the ABC guy on, on, uh, on Fox TV because they had confirmed it all, and everybody's sort of following along. But, you know, all of us out here doing the heavy lifting, we're the ones that exposed it all. Are they, begin, is, are they beginning now to say, okay, some of this stuff – is is so far over the line that it is reaching the point of absurdity and we can't march in lockstep with this guy anymore. I wouldn't count on it lasting. I think when we get closer to the presidential election, the mainstream media will be right back in the tank for Obama. But I think you are right. They're figuring right now, well, it's far enough away from the election. It's going to be really embarrassing if we cover for him now. We can't do this for 18 months. So it will be really tough on him right now. Uh, but then, as the presidential election gets underway, we'll go right back to being in the tank for them, and so people will think we're, we have credibility. Yeah, but, well, it's, but it's, it's, I mean, it's so transparent here. Hold on, Michelle. What is, he was in the White House Rose Garden. 
Uh, not even not even an hour oh, ago. Oh, and this just happened a few minutes ago. He said we're going to scour the budget for every dime, every dime of waste, fraud, and abuse. Scour you know, is the scour word. Scour the budget so we can get it. And what is just astounding to me is we just found out that this White House abused about a half a billion dollars to give to a company who just laid off 1,100 workers. Right, and, and, and in the midst of this... The federal government is still hiring, and it's hiring for a bunch of ridiculous government-sounding jobs, such as, I quote, the administrator of administrators, making, oh, about $160,000 a year. <laughs> don't tell me you have tightened your belt and you have cut to the bone when you're still hiring. Well, don't you, I mean, doesn't it stand to reason that at some point, somebody in the White I don't know, Axel Rod, somebody in the White House, They'd sit there looking at each other like they sent him out and they gave him the script and they said we're going to scour the budget for every dime and they're just coming off uh, Solyndra. What don't you? Wouldn't somebody at some point say, "Listen, somebody's going to find out what we're doing here you and just speak- look damn foolish"? Yeah, I mean, isn't there some point, the tipping point, where they say, "Listen, we're beginning to look like a bunch of idiots over here." <laughs> well, the Democrats are so used to having the media cover for them. Um, I think that's part of the reason Democrats, um, probably the main reason, Democrats do tend to get caught in much more egregious scandals. They're always shocked um, that they elected, you know, an incompetent like Jimmy Carter, a lecher like like Bill Clinton, another incompetent like like Obama, because they cover and cover and cover, and the Democrats sort of get used to it. I mean, imagine going through your life where everything you do, you get a standing ovation. That has been Obama's life, so they don't... An elected Republican is constantly thinking, how will this look? What will they say about me? How will they attack me? <laughs> right. I mean, I've, we've talked about this many times. I think I've heard you say this. It is harder to be conservative because then it is liberal because liberal feels good i mean until unless you know really what life is all about it feels good to say well why don't we just give all the money to all the poor people and be done with it and right that everyone feels- and the new york times lightman you are a deep thinker you care about the poor you are warren buffett i mean he look i don't even pay his own taxes i've turned into an old guy and i can tell you if i spew that stuff out on the air and say how good it feels to go out and just give money your by the way be your money and not right. mine but it's i, I want to give your money to help uh people it sounds – I feel really good. I feel like I should go home and open a beer or something because yeah, I've done my we've work. Got, we've got to counteract that. It drives me crazy, all of these government programs, you know, the Pell Grants, the Bridges. They're always named after these Democratic senators as if the Democratic senator dug deep into his own pocket. And Clair, Claiborne Pell was massively wealthy. No, he wasn't using his own money to fund these scholarships. He was using the money of waitresses, truck drivers, you, me – no, do not name it after him. Pick a random citizen and name it after that. Well, they shouldn't be doing it in the first place. But I really had it with these people acting like they are, um, you know, Joan of Arc, spending our money. Listen, I got, I got to take a second here. Yeah, ten days from now, you get to go to Prescott. Um, yes. Have, have you ever been to Prescott? I lived in Morenci one summer. Oh, well, okay, now you got it. it I mean, Prescott is just a fabulous place, and you're going to be up there at the Yavapai College. They're doing the they're just part of the Reagan 100 lecture series. And so, what are you, what are you going to tell these people up there? You know, these are real cowboys who live up there. You know? I know. I can't wait to be back. Well, doors open at Yavapai College at 5 p.m. I think I take the stage at 6 p.m. We're going to have a rip-roaring speech, question and answer, and then I'm going to do a book signing. It's going to be my only Arizona book signing. Cool. All right. And what are you going to tell them? Are you going to? That's top secret. Okay. But I think I might mention Obama and the Democrats (laughs) and how things are going. Listen, I got, you know, Michelle Larson sitting right next to me is, she she said, and we haven't talked about this yet, this morning she said, you know, you got to ask Ann Coulter about about this story about women working in the White House for Obama. What's the deal? And and I think it's Anita Dunn, the Maui. Who has yes, come out? Very she's, uh, interesting. You know, this is just breaking news that she's saying that women were treated very, very badly. Women of high, uh, well, political power were treated terrible. Christine Romer said she felt like a, a piece of meat. How do you interpret this? Yes, yes, and this is what we have come to expect from liberals. I mean, from observing liberal behavior. Uh, and how they treat their women, you can understand why the feminist movement came out of the left. That's because liberal men are sexist pigs.
Um, you know, you read these descriptions about how what men are like, and to any normal conservative woman or a, the typical American woman, you think, wait, no, men aren't like this. They're the ones buying all of our drinks. We like them. Um, but for a liberal woman hanging around liberal men, no, they're utter sexist. Well, on that note, I have to ask you, since you're coming on a Thursday night, if you're staying overnight, we ask you to come to Wine and Cheeseburger Friday. Yeah, we do Wine and Cheeseburger Friday here. You're invited. And oh, really? Yeah, come on down to Phoenix. It'll be uh, all expense paid unless you submit actual bills. <laughs> then then there's a problem because it's clear channel uh, broadcasting. Listen, it's great to talk to you. I, you you got to come on more often. And we're both dissed by the elites and loved by the people. That's right. That's the only ones who have anything to say good about us. Um, <laughs> listen, always great to have you on. And by the way, the latest book that's uh, out, folks, th- is this your eighth? This uh, is my eighth, and we didn't get to talk a- about it. I have to come back and talk about the book. Yeah, see, I'm going to dangle that. That's the carrot. It's called Demonic, How the Liberal Mob is Endangering America. We love you, Ann. Thanks for coming on. Great to talk to you, Barry and Michelle. Thank you.